Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski -Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. You know, we really do get to do a lot of cool stuff. We get to ride the latest sleds, get our hands on the latest technology and play with it, and also go to some really cool spots in North America, but truly around the world as well. For sure, and I mean, I don't know about you, but I know that there's so many times I wish I could go back and just relive those awesome experiences just once more, maybe carve that perfect line in the powder one more time, or hang out with those great people we met for just one more day. Absolutely, and I know that we've both been talking about doing a best of story, covering off the destinations that we've really loved over the years. But we don't have a ton of time, so we're gonna jump right into it. Luke, why don't you go first? For this one, I'm gonna go back quite a few years to a trip I took in Quebec with a good friend of mine, Jason Ray. We sampled the trails in the Tadoussac and the Bay Como regions. Uh, we kayaked on a fjord, we crossed the St. Lawrence on a ferry, and I got locked in a cage with a full-size timber wolf. Needless to say, this is one that I'm never gonna forget. This trip came at a really opportune time. We'd been having the longest winter in decades in Ontario, and I felt like I had one more ride left in me, so this opportunity came up to go to Quebec late in the season, and I knew there's one other guy who really hadn't had enough riding for the year, my buddy Jason, so I called him up and thought, he just, he's the perfect guy to bring along. He's as enthusiastic about winter as I am. That is a big piece of steel to be going that fast, man. How do they stop oh, yeah, it? That's like rocket. The actual snowmobile portion of this adventure began for Jason and I just outside the town of Sacre Coeur. We stayed at a lodge called Ferme Saint Etoile. It was the perfect place for us to set up camp and start our first couple days of riding because it's right on the trail and it's right near the fjord. We got hooked up with a guide who actually worked at Ferme Saint Etoile. His name was Derek and he knew the area inside and out. He knew the back trails, he knew the, the snowmobile trails. He was the perfect guy to show us everything this area had to offer. Knowing that Quebec trails are among the best in the world, I was really excited for Jason to experience them. Name one thing I never thought I'd be doing. Locking myself in a cage Clock. with a wolf. Right for the neck every time. Yeah. That's it was a lot less scary than I thought once I was in there. The wolf was actually very friendly. I'm not gonna venture into the woods and go petting all the wolves I see, but that one was really nice and it was a really cool experience. For me, it was a trip that both of us were on. It was in Revelstoke, BC, and we got to ride with Randy Swenson, the big mountain rider, as well as Brock Hoyer, who's well known for snow bikes. And this was our first foray into snow bike riding, as well as big mountain turbos. As we rode out of the parking lot, we started in pretty skinny conditions, but it did not take long once we started going up the side of that mountain to get into some really, really beautiful snow conditions, some sun. You're looking back out over uh, the town of Revelstoke, and it's just like, uh, it's amazing. I mean, you got mountains in the background, you got the river that runs through, you got the town. Well, today we're up, uh, you know, we're in Boulder Mountain in Revelstoke, BC, and we're here today with uh, the Snow Tracks fellas, Luke and AJ. We're going to uh, let them experience Yamaha four-stroke snowmobiles in a mountain environment. The, you know, the 2016 uh, Yamaha Viper MTX. It was awesome riding. These, these Yamaha sleds, the power that an MPI kit adds to a Viper is just insane. It doesn't matter what altitude you're at. Here we're riding maybe six to 7,000 feet. This thing is making that 180, you know, horsepower all the time. So our day two is gonna be all about snow bikes and we had uh, the brand new 2016 uh, YZ450F bikes with the Yeti 129 kit on it. I, I mean, to say that I was excited would be an understatement, but I was also super nervous because as much as everybody can tell you this is gonna be so easy and, and the guys all kept saying, this is easy, you know snow, you know riding snowmobiles, you'll be fine out there. You've ridden dirt bikes in your, in your past and you'll be fine. I just didn't believe them. I gotta tell you, I was I was intimidated. I mean, looking at, at a snow bike on hard packed snow, you, you just, you're not sure if you're gonna be able to ride this thing. It was, it was a super fun experience. Honestly, this might be one of the best times I've had in deep snow and riding with great people, great equipment in a really beautiful area. 
There's no question riding in the mountains is always memorable, but for me, it's oftentimes the people I ride with that make a trip more memorable than the others. Riding in Montana with Rob Kincaid and Dave McClure definitely tops the list. Guns and sleds, man. Merca. I know a lot about Yellowstone, and I've ridden there many times, but I don't know Rob and Dave that well, and I didn't know what to expect from a ride with them. We met up at the local Articat dealership before heading out, and from the very first handshake, I knew this experience was going to be a memorable one. I've been riding snowmobiles for 18 years, mainly racing, and I've always rode in the backcountry. I love the mountains because it's always challenging. I don't even know how many years I've been riding. I mean, ever since I was old enough to hold on to a snowmobile. After a full day of riding in West Yellowstone with Rob and Dave, I can honestly say I now know who these guys are. I know they're just normal guys with incredible talent who have worked extremely hard to be able to do what they love for a living. I also learned that they're both avid outdoorsmen and hunters who, like me, have a passion for shooting guns. With this in mind, I thought it'd be cool to go to an awesome little shooting range right in downtown West Yellowstone that offers shooters the opportunity to try fully automatic machine guns. We got to go down to the gun range. and It was pretty cool. I didn't even know that there was places like that in the United States where you could go in and grab some machine guns and blow some stuff up. It was pretty awesome. I'm kind of labeled as the off-trail guy, but another one in Montana that tops the list and also gives you kind of a, an experience that's much broader is West Yellowstone. You can experience the beauty of Yellowstone National Park or go right next door to the Gallatin National Forest and have a blast playing in the mountains. I've been out to West Yellowstone so many times I've lost track. I've been here in the winter, I've ridden sleds, I've been here in the summer, I've done ATVs and side-by-sides. I keep coming back because I love this place. It is just, it's such a wonderland, uh, such a cool spot, so many things that it offers for people to do and, and so many experiences. I mean, the scenery is just second to none. And honestly, I, I love the winter here the best. Brandy had a special spot picked out for us. It's a place that she really likes to go and it's sort of her, her free ride area that she doesn't tell anybody about and she kept it special for us, which was great, that was nice. We, we broke over this one hill and quite literally, there was this valley in between, in between the trail. The trail did this loop right around this valley. It was what you could explain as being sort of almost, almost like a snow cross playground. And I think, I think Brandy stuck to the trail and was kind of wondering where we were. And at one point uh, she was stopped on the trail looking around and Jamie and I, we both looked at each other and we were like, should we do this? And, and I think it was pretty much known that we were going to do this. It was great going up to Two Top again. Uh, got a lot of experience up there with shooting photos for the magazine. Um, so we kind of knew the areas that we were aiming towards that uh, had some drifts from previous years and uh, had some great hits, so provided some great shots. I think we've got time for one more and let's make this one really special. Yeah, and I'm pretty certain that we're not gonna disagree in any way. Usually we fight it out, but this one, we agree on. I knew that after riding last season with Carl and pushing myself really past where I thought I was capable, uh, trained me to become a better rider and I knew that I was going to go out and force Luke to do a couple of those things too. I was excited to ride in the Sycamus area with Carl in particular because obviously I'd heard AJ's stories, I'd heard all the crazy things that Carl had coaxed him to do and taught him how to do, but I also know that that area of BC is spectacular. It is a mountain riding paradise. Carl set up in particular is quite private. So the places he rides aren't really tracked up. They're not really uh, accessed by a lot of people. So he basically guarantees that you're gonna find fresh powder and untracked areas. So I was pretty excited to be the first one to make some lines in some fresh snow. But then once they ride here for a bit, then they finally get to have the feeling of those really long, cool descents. The first trip down the side of the mountain was I can only describe it as out of control because I really didn't know what I was doing. 
it was interesting. He was he was picking along nice and slow the whole time, taking the safe lines and and really you could tell he was he was super nervous. After I did it once, after I made it to the bottom and realized I wasn't dead, all I wanted to do is do it again. And the, the second and third time I did it, I was on the gas running down the side of the hill. I was actually accelerating on my side and the snow was coming over the hood and there was a few drifts in the middle where you're kind of just pounding through and the snow's flying everywhere. It was, it was one of the best feelings I've ever had on a snowmobile. This has been a lot of fun looking back on some of our favorite trips, but the truth of the matter is, What's most important is what's to come in the future. Yeah, absolutely. We've got lots of cool stuff lined up. We're gonna go back to some of these places, I'm sure, but in the future, we've got lots of great stuff coming your way. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. You know, in this business, I get to see a lot of really cool products and people send me stuff to test all the time. Some of it's very functional, some of it's not, but today I wanna show you the stuff that I think is actually pretty cool. Up first is something that I'm actually pretty excited about. We all know Skidoo has hit a home run with the link brackets and accessories. I mean, this stuff is hands down the smartest design mounting system in the biz, and we love using it. But what about folks who don't have a Skidoo? Well, Up North Technologies makes this really cool Pro Series adapter bracket. Available for all brands and also available in a single mount design, the quarter inch aluminum CNC laser cut top plate gets mounted to your tunnel. In our case, into T-slots of a Polaris tunnel. All bracket systems go through a two-phase finishing process where each part is yellow chromate anodized and then finished off with a durable black powder coat finish. This sled can now accept any of the link accessories offered in the market. How cool is that? One of the all-time most popular link accessories would have to be the standard gas can. And for me, I really like this when I'm wandering off trail because it gives me that little bit of extra insurance that I'm actually gonna get home. Well, it actually offers a whole lot of insurance. With 14.5 liters of capacity, you can pretty much get home from anywhere you've wandered. The Caddy is strong and well-built and can be stacked if needed. Up North Technologies also threw in one of their aluminum helmet holders for us to try out. Well, at first I thought this was a little overkill. I realized how much my carbon fiber helmet is worth and how many times it goes tumbling off my sled when I'm digging out or standing around. This little easy to install holder goes on in seconds and uses a simple pull arm that'll keep our lid upright when you're stopped and because it rotates, your lid stays put even when you're off camber. Then it simply folds down when not in use. Pretty smart idea and it weighs only a few ounces. While I'm talking about helmets, 509 has some seriously nice goggles as we all know, but more specifically I'm referring to the 509 Ignite heated goggle setup. The Ignite Kingpin snow goggle have a dual lens that features indium tin oxide as a layer. This is a conductive material that allows the 7.4 volt lithium ion power pack to heat the entire goggle surface to 104 degrees. The heat will run for four to five hours, continuous or can be used in 120 second burst modes to clear the fog and get your vision cleared up. There's also built in Bluetooth and an app coming soon to allow mobile activation of the heat and run profiles of heating throughout the customizable app settings. Problem with fog? Nope, not anymore. Wheel dollies tend to be a pain when you're running them across your driveway. The straps break, the dolly doesn't fit, and usually you're left more frustrated than had you just carved up your nice paved driveway with the carbides. Not so with the Swedish made Ski Saver. This product is relatively new, but in our minds has become the ski dolly to have. It fits all brand skis and adjusts in width from 6.3 to 10.6 inches. The handle is three position adjustable and simply hooks under the ski handle to allow the ski to lift off the ground and it gives you easy steering and a free rolling front end. Running on gravel, concrete, pavement, or soil is no problem and the sturdy solid composite wheels take a beating and keep on rolling. No more carbide scars, dollies tipping over, or frustrating straps getting stuck on the spindle or breaking off. This is simple innovation. One area of snowmobiling technology that really hasn't seen much improvement is the springs on our sleds. Sure, you could go get a second mortgage and buy a set of titanium springs, but really that's not feasible. So what can you do on a budget that's gonna improve your ride quality? The crew at Bite Harder, the folks who brought us the slick carbide and stud sharpening tools, has come up with an innovative new product called Polytune Rings. These microcellular polyurethane rings slip in between the coils of your springs and adjust the spring's rate. Much like spring spacers in car racing, the polytune rings will alter the spring rate to be more progressive and increase the reaction time of the suspension spring to different inputs from bumps. Bite Harder says they improve rough trail handling and keep front ends flatter in cornering. 
For a mere 20 bucks, you can pick up a set in soft, medium, or hard and install in minutes. If you're thinking about a shock upgrade, why not give the Polytune rings a try first? For 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. The parts I showed you today add functionality to your sled, and that's something that I can really benefit from on the SKS, as I've pretty much dubbed it my own. I'm gonna put all of these things to the test for the rest of the season, so stay tuned for updates. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Question of the day, is bigger always better? Some might say yes, but I digress. There's definitely a time and place for bigger, at which point it might be better, but it's definitely not a universal truth. Case in point, Skidoo's 2018 Summit X 850-175. This is the biggest, baddest Summit in Skidoo's lineup, and it's an absolute deep snow weapon under the right conditions. Last season, Skidoo moved to the new G4 chassis and 850 engine combo for most of their Summit lineup. Yet for some reason, the 174 Summit remained in the XM chassis with the older 800 motor. This seriously hurt its finish in our 174 shootout last year, in which we stated that had the Skidoo been in the G4 chassis, it may have won. Well, this season, it finally is. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. Skidoo's Summit in the G4 chassis is, for me at least, the easiest to ride mountain sled I've ever swung a leg over. Initially, I was very skeptical and expected the extreme rider forward positioning to be a hindrance, but boy was I wrong. Of course, T-Motion helps a lot to reduce the effort required to pull the sled on its side and, more importantly, to keep it there when things get pretty serious. So yes, I think the G4 is a great platform, and of course, the 850 E-Tech motor is a beast. It offers buttery smooth power delivery, it's got great bottom end, stout mid-range, and long legs up top. And of course, E-Tech does a great job of keeping this engine running clean and smooth no matter the altitude. The P-Drive clutch delivers lightning fast back shift, so the engine never feels overloaded by the track in changing conditions. And while this is a big plus on the trail, in the mountains where traction is changing by the second, it's an even bigger benefit. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from the 175's move to the G4 chassis, but I think the most interesting and exciting piece of new technology from Skidoo this season, for mountain riders at least, is the absolutely genius shot system. By now, most of you have probably read about it, but here's a short synopsis. Shot uses the stator as an electric starter motor and a lightweight ultra capacitor as a battery. An ultra capacitor is like a battery that can be charged super quick, can dump its power in a massive surge all at once, but can't store power for long periods of time. Besides using the stator as an electric motor and an ultra capacitor as a battery, what else is revolutionary about the shot system you might be asking? Well, the total weight penalty for this system is a mere two pounds. That's right, electric start that only weighs two pounds total. The way shot works is pretty simple. You pull start your sled in the morning. Within about 20 seconds, the ultra capacitor is charged. The capacitor will store enough power to start the sled for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you may still be able to start the sled, but there are no guarantees. If not, you simply pull start the sled again and the system recharges in 20 more seconds. It's called the shot system because technically the ultra capacitor can only store enough energy to start the sled one time before it needs to be recharged. As Skidoo puts it, you get one shot. But in our testing, we've been able to start the sled twice almost every time we've tried. For mountain guys and girls who are starting and stopping their sleds up to 40 and 50 times a day, this system is amazing. Not just because it saves you all the energy required to pull the sled over that many times, but the biggest area we think shot will benefit riders, especially lighter riders, is when the sled needs to be started in a really awkward position. It's a revolutionary system that requires almost no weight penalty and works exactly as promised. What's not to love about that, right? But what about the 175 inch rear end you might be asking? Well, here's my take on it. And I'll be perfectly honest right up front and say that in most conditions, I prefer a 165 and can ride that shorter sled better than I can the 175. And I've talked to a number of other highly accomplished mountain riders who completely agree. 
which is why my conclusion about the 175 Summit is that it's not a universal mountain sled, or in other words, it's not the right sled for everyone. It's more difficult to turn due to the extra length. It doesn't want to pull its nose up as easily as a shorter sled would, and when you get stuck, you are really, really stuck. But there's no arguing, the 175 with its three inch paddle does have its place. This sled really shines when flotation and traction are the highest priority. When things get super deep or super fluffy, you're definitely gonna wish you had a 175 under your buns. Or if you climb a lot, you'll really appreciate the extra traction that freakishly long track provides. These are the places the 175 is at its best, and if this is where you ride, this is your sled. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, see endless possibilities, MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Art to Cat, share our passion. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the like button and then subscribe to Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel that's constantly being updated with fresh content.